that's what we call this. So Mango has got a lot of customization within the software system. You can give the former title, give an abbreviation, set up the coordinators and investigators. You can then also define the stage definitions. Again, another value uh, or benefit of dealing with Mango is that we allow you to customize how many stages are in the various different workflows of your investigation modules. So here we've got the coordinator assigned then the investigation coordinator review and close. And you can take this from being a very simple four stage investigation all the way up to a very, very complex 10 stage investigation if you want to take it that way. So the first thing to do is to set up the workflow, give the former title, link it to the coordinators and investigators. And then what you want to do is you then want to set up all the various different fields that would be available within the module. So um, environmental incident and accident categories, causes of incidents, et cetera, because the module will not work effectively if the drop-down boxes in the fields, et cetera, are not correctly set up. And, and you can put in additional information such as reporting information, types of um, environmental incidents and accidents, et cetera. So the module will have to be set up in the system admin before you can get it to work. But the module is going to work in a very similar function. So if I wanted to report um, an environmental incident, I would log a report an incident, and then I would obviously work my way through the workflow and all the various different drop-down fields, et cetera, that you have customized will then become available to your people. Now, for this environmental incident, we've set it up for, for four different stages. So the way that it would work is somebody would report it, and again, um, some of the new adaptations that are going to come into the, the Mango app is the ability to report either environmental incidents or food safety incidents uh, from the Mango app. So there are some more updates. Uh, we're going to be sending out another uh, webinar request early in September because Mango is uh, bringing out some brand new updates and new tips and tricks which are coming out in the next week or so. Um, who knows, maybe, maybe the offline app. Uh, will be uh, one of the next things that we're going to introduce. But anyway, I can't say. It, it just depends on what they're going to release. So the module needs to be set up first. It needs to be linked to your investigators and your coordinators. And um, then you're able to release the, the module to people. Again, what I wanted to quickly take you into is that if you have any questions around Mango, around how to set something up, if you go underneath your name on the top left-hand side and you go to the FAQs, Frequently Asked Questions, Here's where Mango has gone to great lengths to, from either a user guide perspective or from an administrator perspective, how to uh, populate, how to utilize the various different modules. So if you've got some questions around the environmental incident module, we've created a video here within Mango, how to um, utilize the, the module with some, some tips and tricks that are built into there, and then how to report an environmental incident. So we've created videos built into the system that tells you how to use the module. So that's from a user perspective. If you are a Mango administrator, obviously how to set up, how to create investigators and coordinators and how to set um, the uh, environmental incident module up is all built into the administrator guides. And that goes for any of the modules. The FAQs are gonna give um, users information on how to use it correctly. And then the admin guides is going to help you understand from an administrator perspective how the various different modules function. So I've got some extra participants who want to join in. Let me just let them in. Okay, so that's a brief overview of the environmental incident module. So if you've got spills or environmental releases that require reporting and investigating, um, and then information provided to the regulator or interested parties, this is a great module for you to use. And I'm pretty sure that with the next release or updates of the app, the Mango app on your phone, there will be opportunities to report environmental incidents or food safety incidents from there. That's what we assume is going to come up with some of the next updates. So that's the, the environmental incident. Now, one that a lot of clients have not necessarily asked us to release to them is the food safety module. Now, a lot of you may not be certified against um, ISO 22001 for, for food safety. However, if you have canteens on site and you have uh, certificates of acceptability that are issued by your environmental health practitioners in the local municipality, again, there may be some requirements to report and investigate food safety incidents that again, you can use as part of your COA applications or evidence of the fact that you are managing food safety on your site as part of your, 
your licensing or your certificate of acceptability process. And again, the food safety module is going to work in exactly the same way. If you would like us to release it to you, please contact Paul, support at srmc.co.za, and he will release the module to you. Again, as an administrator, you'll have to go into the system admin module. You'll have to go into the food safety setup, go into the workflow setup where you'll be able to identify uh, the different um, uh, excuse me, uh, coordinators and investigators. So just give me a second over here. So the food safety workflow setup. Again, we've defined the stage definitions within the workflow. We've given the form a description. We've said who the coordinators and the investigators are. And then we may or may not have populated some of the information into here on what the root causes are, um, who has an authority been noti notified, person reporting, potential severity. And these fields in the system administration are all fields that are going to drop down in your food safety form. So once the module's released to you and you've then populated the various different fields within here, you're then welcome to utilize the food safety module and it will work food safety um, incident reporting module and it's going to work in exactly the same way. Re report a food safety incident and there are all the fields that then goes off to a coordinator once it's been reported and it goes through to the coordinator, the coordinator will pick that up in my investigation. So here's an example of a food safety incident that was reported. I can then open this up. I can see all the information that's been put into here. I can see when the incident occurred, what some of the details are, what happened, what was the suspected outcome, how did the contamination occur, root cause analysis, and it's going to then form a, a record of all the interactions from the various different People. Now, something that I'd like to bring to your attention with any of the investigation modules, whether it's accidents, food safety, environmental, or the improvement module, once you've logged a particular incident, it then gives you the opportunity to create corrective action from within the module. So let's say I want to take corrective action against a procedure needs to be updated, which was part of the root cause. If you have a look where I am over here, it says add improvement. So I can then go and add an improvement and I can say, um, let's say this had something to do with the temperature controls on the fridges, um, update frequency of temperature checks. And I can say that that is going to nick the date of the occurrence was today, the proposed action, putting whatever needs to go into there, whoever the coordinator, the person who's got to action this particular item, and uh, the type of improvement. So I can say that this is a food safety incident. I'm just going to set some audit finding for now. Now, what I'd just quickly like to bring to your attention is the following. As you can see over here, this is grayed out. Many of you will, will realize that until all the required fields are in, that is not going to highlight. So if any of you are new to Mango. So I've created an improvement here. I can see the improvement's got its own unique number. Now, you can see that I've closed that, but there's no indication over here that I've raised an improvement. If I select refresh, it's then going to show that from in this improvement of the food safety incident, I've then created another improvement to drive corrective action within here. So I can assign it to investigators to take further action. Um, I can fill in and complete this particular form to make sure that it's up to speed and then I could close it off at this particular stage if I wanted to. Go back to my investigations, it would have come out of here and it will be in the food safety register as one of those particular issues. You can see that it's now been closed. I'd just like to draw your attention again to any of the modules. Let's go and have, let's go and have a look at the dashboard. For executives that are utilizing Mango who want to have a high level understanding of how the system is working, let's just show you some of the value opportunities here. So the execs can go in on a weekly basis. This again is something that I screenshot and pull out into the management reviews that we do with our clients. This is a quick thing we can show and pull together. Now the one thing that I always chat with CEOs about who are using the, the product, some of the key things to be watching are these dials at the bottom of the executive screen. Now, if I was the executive for this company, I could see that 47% of all the compliance activities that I had within my system were overdue. It generally means that my compliance person is about to get fired. So the smaller these lines are, obviously the better it is for your particular job and your continuing suitability to work for your 
particular organization. So the CEOs can have a look at the number of accidents they've been reporting. There's a high level graph, improvements that have been reported, a high level graph. That they can then have a look into environmental incidents, et cetera, reported risks and training that's been done and these particular dials. Obviously, within any of the modules, you're aware of the fact that there are advanced charting options within each of the modules. Many of you will be aware of this. I can then go in and I can say, well, I want all the accidents by body part. Mango, because it's the repository of all of my information, is then going to pull these particular charts out. But now here's the learning for some of you, you may or may not be aware. If I wanted to pull this or create bespoke charts, because obviously if I have a look at accidents and incidents by body part, this is organization wide. But if I wanted to pull it out for a particular department that you may have, I would go add, and let's just say uh, body part stats, and I want to report on body parts. This must be a pie chart. And now here's the imperative, is the filtering function. I can, I can filter this through to, I just want to pull a report out on all accidents by body part for the engineering department. And obviously I can ring fence the date line. I could do it from the beginning of the year, I could do it for the past month. And then what this is going to do is it's then going to pull body part stats out just for the engineering department. So you can create bespoke charts that you can then get back into at any particular time. So I just wanna go back into there and show you that once you've created those particular charts, how you can then get back into it. Okay guys, I think uh, one of the things that we've got to consider is that because I'm, I'm streaming a video and trying to utilize Mango at the same time that the, the speed of the, the system may slow down a little bit. So if I went back into the charts function there, body part stats engineering. So once I create a chart, it then gets recorded in this list of all available charts. So you could go through and you could create infinitesimal amount of charts that you want to be able to check on a monthly basis or report or demonstrate to, to management. And these chart uh, writing functions are available in many of the modules. So the environmental module, the food safety module, um, the uh, risk management module, there's a whole lot of charting functions that you'll be able to see within. So one of the ones that I wanted to dwell on a little bit this afternoon, I just want to see uh, this in chats, sorry. Bert, I hope you're recording the meeting. Yes, uh, yes Bert, I am recording a meeting. Uh, I, Nicholas from D, is the environmental incident reflecting the accident and incident model? No, D, not at all. One of the things that a lot of the clients have requested is because many of our clients are using Mango for triple certification. So they're ISO 9000, ISO 14000, ISO 45000, even 22000 as well. They want um, segmented uh, reporting modules. So there's an accident module which is specifically for um, occupational health and safety incidents. Now, the question D more specifically is that the environmental module replaces the fact that previously or historically when we use Mango, that you would have used the accident or incident module for reporting environmental incidents. Now, environmental incidents are reported in their own unique module. So accidents and incidents are for health and safety, environmental for environmental food safety for 22,000 food safety, and then improvements for any of your management system related improvements, audit findings, et cetera, or where your quality non-conformities, et cetera, can rest. Now, what I wanted to do is I wanted to take uh, five or 10 minutes just to go through the e-learning module. Many people are not aware of the fact that you can create e-learning, you can create um, information and tests within Mango of um, how to test competency of individuals within your organization. So let's see how it works. If you go into the human resources module and you go to the skills component, the skills silo within the, um, the human resources module. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, uh, I have created, or let's do this from scratch. Um, let's just say that this is, um, risk awareness. So I've created a skill called risk awareness and I can put some details of what the particular skill is. I can link it to an event if this is something that repeats itself. 
And then once I've created the skill and I've put some details in there, I can then press save. So this is in the human resources module in the skills silo. Now you can see once I've saved it, this e-learning setup button is then available. So what it's saying is I have to create the skill first. And once I've created the skill, I can then create the e-learning setup. So I'm going to go, yes, I want to create the e-learning setup. Who is this ultimately? I'm going to open it up for editing. Who is going to be the assessor on this? I'm going to say that uh, Nicholas is the assessor. The pass mark on this particular thing, you can set it up. I'm just saying it's 90%. I'm giving the people three incorrect attempts before they fail outright. The number of questions in this I'm going to say are two. You can randomize the order and I want to publish the test afterwards. So I'm going to press save. Okay. Now what I've done is I've created the e-learning setup and you can see over here on the left hand side slightly grayed out is add slides. So now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm adding, I'll just open it up for editing, I'm adding content into the e-learning. So over here I can put YouTube links, I can link procedures or policies, I can write text into here, I could place images if I've uploaded them as links, so I could put a PowerPoint presentation in there or I could put a particular procedure. After that, after I've created the content slide, I can then add a question. So um, I could say here, what is our most significant risk, right? And then I could add the answer. So let's say I'm going to give three multiple choice. So let's say this is um, vehicles, um, manual handling, so I'm trying to type quickly, so manual handling or noise. So in many companies, vehicles is going to be the most significant risk. So what I'm doing is I put some text in, I create a content slide. I then put the question in, I create as many different answers as I need to. And then if you'll note over here on the right hand side, I select whichever one is the correct answer. Okay, so now I'm going to do this again. I'm going to add another question here, and I'm going to say um, which hazard has caused the most incidents. And this may again be contained within the, the presentation. And again, I'm going to add three answers in there. And I can say noise, um, sharp cutting blades, and slips, trips, and falls. Now again, let's just say what's caused the most amount of incidents is sharp cutting blades. Now what I've done is just to recap here, I've said what the e-learning is, I've created a content slide, I can also add extra slides underneath that. You can create multiple slides, multiple questions underneath there. So this is just a simple example. I create a content slide, and then I create two particular questions. I'm gonna press save. So what we've done is we have created a skill and then we've created an e-learning assessment. So that's the first step. Now what I need to do is I need to allocate that skill to people who need to do the assessment. So here's where I would go to, still in the human resources module, I'd go over here to skills or add multiple skills. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to allocate that skill to my name so that I know that I have to do it. And the skill is uh, risk awareness. So I've allocated the skill to my name and I'm saying that I'm currently untrained. The day that this assessment that I was assessed untrained was done there. The uh, overall assessment, maybe ABC training, and I'm going to press save. Now what I've done is I've allocated that skill to my name, which means when an employee logs in and that skill has been allocated to their name, to their profile, if I go up here to my name, it says Nicholas Graham, and I go into my profile. Nicholas Graham, and I go into my profile, and I go into my skills. Any of those skills that require assessment are going to be under my profile and under my skills. So here you can see risk awareness. I'm currently, my competency level is untrained, etc. I'm now going to go in and I'm going to start the e-learning. I'm going to do this particular test to confirm competency. 
So again, I could uh, go in there. I've, I've, let's say I've already uh, learned the content. So before I start the e-learning, I want to learn the content. And over here is where your link or your procedure or whatever somebody's got to read would be. I can then click that procedure will open up. I've then got to read through. Once I'm happy that I've done that, I can then start the e-learning. So what is our most significant risk? And let's say, I'm going to say vehicles, okay? And then which hazard has caused the most amount of incidents? Sharp cutting blades. Okay, you've got 100%, you were required to get 90. And now if I went back into my skills, uh, risk awareness, um, it will then populate through, let me just go back in here. that I've done that. So e-learning results over here, you can see that I got 100% in that particular test. And also if I go through to my human resources, I go through to Nicholas, and I pull it up. If I go through to my competency, risk awareness, and I can see that the, uh, this now, once, now, once the e-learning has been done, the, the assessor of the course is going to be notified. The assessor will go in and see that you have passed, and they will then update the competency statement within the skills module for the employee. So just a quick recap of what we've done. In the skills module, I'm going to create a course. In this particular case, it was called Risk Awareness. I then go into e-learning setup and I create the e-learning, I create content slides, I create questions, and I link it to answers. Once um, I've finished that, I then link the skill to the employee. The employee can then, in their profile, they'll go into their profile, they'll go to my skills. Any of those assessment-based skills will populate in here. They can then go in, learn the content, they can then take the e-learning and process the e-learning. Once that has been completed, once that has been completed, the assessor will then be notified. You can then go in and moderate that the assessment was effective and they can then update the person's competency in the e-learning module. So I, just, I can see there's a question around here. Let's just have a look at that. Um, but environmental incidents that were reported under the old safety incident module, can one drag it into the new environmental module? But I, I very much wish that that was possible, but unfortunately not. So the, the two strategies that you can deploy there is either to leave it in the uh, historic accident or incident module. If you've had a, lo a lot of them, that may be the best chance. If you've had a few, you may best be served by deleting those particular incidents from the module, or before you do that, extracting the information, storing it on your PC, and then logging the environmental incidents. And that suggestion is only based on the number um, of incidents that you have, what would be the best odds. So, Linnell, good question there. Will the e-learning uh, be available on the phone app? No, not yet. And I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not aware of, of any development requests around that. So, but just remember, Linnell, that although if you're using your phone, if you go into the Mango app on your phone, you won't be able to process it. But if you went in through an internet browser on your phone, you would be able to do the assessment online. So you would log into Mango normally as if you were logging in on a, on a PC. It would then customize its size and shape, et cetera, to fit your phone. And you can do the e-learning uh, process from your phone, but not in the Mango app through your normal internet browser. So I trust that that answers that particular question. So where I want to go from here is I want to go into the plant and equipment module. So many of you are, are very fond of the plant and equipment module. You've been using it for some time. There's some new adaptations that some of you may or may not be utilizing and I wanted to bring that to your attention this afternoon. So many of you will have your asset registers uploaded into the system under managed plant and equipment. Now, let's say you've had a breakdown and somebody wants to go and request maintenance on a breakdown. They can go over here on the left-hand side to request maintenance, and I can then identify which piece of equipment it is. Let's say it's the one, two, three forklift. The description is um, a broken time. The type of maintenance, this is a breakdown, and again, this requires some customization, which is available in the system admin. Uh, who was that identified? 
by, it was identified by Nick on this particular day. That uh, it was identified in KwaZulu Natal, the branch, Durban. Now, obviously, many of you in using mango for a while will be aware that where there is a red asterisk, it means that it is um, customer, it is mandatory in information. So who's the coordinator? The person needs to coordinate this is, is Nicholas. And I'm going to say that um, is the equipment required to be isolated? Yes, it is, because there's a permit to work process built into this module as well that people can, can complete. So I haven't filled in the branch, that's what's not allowing me to save. And you can see then I can save. Now, the coordinator, this request for maintenance 0018 has been emailed to the coordinator that you selected. They can then pick this up in my work request. So before I go there, once you report to re uh, a, a request to maintenance, they will go into the, uh, the, the maintenance register. So I'm just going to show you. Here's a maintenance register of all the requests for maintenance, so the same as a job card function within your business. So they will go through to the register. Similar to the improvement register or accident register, this is a register of all requests for maintenance. Please note, please note that you cannot process the work from here. You can change the coordinate, you can do a whole load of things, but this is not my work request. This is a repository of all the job cards or the requests for maintenance, and you can see them within here, but you can't actually process them. The processing of that job card is done down at the bottom here, left-hand side, for my work requests. So if I go through to my work request, RFM0018, a broken tine on the forklift. I was the coordinator, so I'm going to open that up for editing. I'm going to say, right, this is uh, a service that needs to be done. The code relative to that is, let's say, change the tires and the brakes. Again, these are all customizable fields that you, within your unique business, can change around. Um, assigned to action, the person who's going to be doing the work uh, to be completed by uh, that particular date. Um, supplies, so work planning, the work can be done. So if you wanted to be able to, for, for production planning, you can say that the work can be done between this date and this particular date and the following hours. You can also link it into contractors or suppliers um, who can perform the particular servicing. You can add improvements from here. You can add risks in that are associated with the work. So uh, let's just say uh, moving machinery. If I wanted to link hazards and risks from the risk register, and I know that that one's not in here, so I'm just going to select a welding risk or see what comes up here, just so I can show you how I can link hazards and risks from the risk register. And here, so I'm going to select things from the risk register, and then I'm going to put the name in there and just say welding. Let's say some welding is going to be done on the time. I can then link risks um, into this particular work. So comments, please maintain as quickly as possible. We need the machine back and I can either close it out or I can send this off to the next stage, which is the person who's going to be performing the work, which is also me in this particular case. I can then open this up for editing. As you can see, it's starting to process all the interactions within the stages. I can then say that the work has then been completed if necessary send it on to the next stage. <clears throat> you can see it's recorded all the interactions of the various different people as it's gone from the maintenance manager to the person who's gonna be doing the work or to the contractor, um, et cetera. And the work has now been completed. You can now close off. Now, here's an interesting thing. It said at the bottom, the plant and equipment is still locked out by this request. Do you want to unlock it? So I can then say, yes, I want to unlock that particular piece of equipment. And if I had requested that permit to work process to be triggered during this, this is what's gonna pop up at the end. And then I'm gonna press save. I can then check on this back in the maintenance register. And I can then get, if uh, somebody wanted some information on all the work requests that have been logged, there is request number 18. I can export it to, <coughs> to PDF. And there's the information on re request for maintenance 18. So there's your job card, all the action stages, work summary, and a record of times and dates and all the interactions of, of people who had used um, the particular function. So 
Those are the modules that I've chosen to go through this afternoon. We've looked at the environmental module, we've looked at the food safety module, we've looked at how to deploy e-learning within your business, and we've looked at how to do the request for maintenance within the plant and equipment module. So what I'm gonna do now, I can see there's another uh, chat request come through. Linnell, all right, sir. All right, thanks very much for, for that, Linnell. Um, what I'm gonna do now, ladies and gents, is I'm going to uh, just open this up. Thanks very much for all the questions. Now, ladies and gents, uh, we're, it is quarter to three. I mean, it will take 15 minutes to answer any particular questions that you may have in regards to mod Mango. Who knows, you're welcome to stay on, you're welcome to leave if you are quite happy uh, with what you've seen so far. If you want to stay on and listen to the other questions and how I answer them, you're, you're more than welcome to stay. So you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask any particular questions if you'd like me to answer something specific with regards to Mango. Um, please don't ask development requests now or when stuff is going to be released because I get told when stuff is going to be released. I know that there's a new one coming out next week, but I don't know what is being released. We get told once the release is made and we then inform you. So, ladies and gents, the floor is now open to you if you would like to ask any specific questions around Mango. Go for it. Paul, I don't know if you can unmute yourself at the moment. Maybe it'd be a good opportunity to introduce yourself. I don't know if you can, or whether you've got audio. Yes, I should have audio now. Okay, ladies and gents, just by means of introduction, Paul. Uh, can you turn your camera on, Paul? Just so it's always nice for people to see the, the face of the person <laughs> that they're dealing with. Okay, I shall. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Paul. He is your Mango Champion. If there's anything that you need, any questions, he is a fantastic guy. Uh, he's sitting in the office, he's data capturing for people, he's answering questions, he's ask, uh, answering all of your support queries. Um, if you need anything, support at srmc.co.za, and that is your man, Paul. Thanks very much, Paul. Hi, everyone. Hey, ladies and gents, I'm give you more minutes if there's any questions that anybody has with regards to the product. Um, obviously, we will do another Mango webinar in two weeks' time once the new release is made, and we will then educate people on what all the new releases are and how to work with it and how to deploy it into your business and what some of the, the benefits are of, of those particular modules. Any questions? Hi, Nicholas, it's Dee. Yes, Dee, far away, man. Uh Sorry, man. Earlier on, when, you were when we were talking about the, um, when I asked the question if the environmental incident accident is replacing the other accident incident, um, you said no. So do I continue to post the incident and accident reports to the, the incident and accident module? Or must I then start afresh in the environmental incident? Yeah, so my, my suggestion, my suggestion to you, and I, I don't know how many environmental incidents um, you've had historically, and now's not the time to mention it online, but I, I would prefer to, to then start processing all environmental incidents through the environmental incident module so that you can start, so that especially when one of the concerns, one of the motivations behind us developing that module is to separate out environmental incident information from the health and safety information. So for me, the motivation is around the accuracy of the reporting data that you may want to show to the, uh, the management team, um, particularly so you can definitively separate environmental incidents. Because obviously, historically, historically, all of the information was in the accident and incident module. Now you've got the opportunity to separate that information out into a dedicated reporting module with more specific environmental information uh, um, built into it as well. So my suggestion would be to use the environmental incident for environmental incidents um, and stop using the accident and incident module if that's what you were using. Okay, cool. So then I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll get all the other incident and accident uh, things that are still open for me closed and then any other further incident and accident reports, I'll, I will then start there. 100%, so, good question. And, and, okay, and then obviously, um, I've never used that environmental module, so obviously then Paul will have to... Yeah, Paul will help you set it up. You, what, obviously, because it's business-specific information, 
or we'll take you through the system admin module. You're obviously going to have to provide the fields. We can obviously suggest what you need to consider that, which is part of the role of what we play. We'll suggest what needs to go into those, those different fields. But obviously, because it's, in your case, CamJet specific information, you tell us what you want in there, and we'll show you how to set it up and get it going. Okay, cool. Thank you. Excellent. More than welcome. <laughs> Ladies and gents, any, any more questions? Hi, Nicholas, Bert here. Um, two okay. questions. Um, will you email us the recording of this meeting? Absolutely. The second, and the second one is, um, I haven't received any notifications. Will you email when the models is going um, to be presented to us? Okay, so when you new modules are released, you haven't received any notifications. So what we'll do, Paul, your on if you can just stop this down on your notes, see who the Mango notification emails are going to at Bert's business. Um, see as well, put a note there for myself to see if Bert is on the mailing list for the blogs. That would be the, the two issues. And um, then also... I just want to check here. So Mango News, Paul, let me just quickly share with you. Um, sorry, let me just quickly share my screen with you again. And share. So within your profile, Bert, if you go underneath your name and you see um, over here messages, any specific updates that come out from Mango go into your Mango News. So this little uh, envelope icon that you see up here at the top, with the numbers next to it, saying, saying how many uh, things have been notified by Mango. Whenever Mango do a, an update or a release, you can see they've changed the end user agreement, changed in the terms and conditions. There's also a Mango survey that they've asked people um, to take. You can then open that and there's a link to the survey. So any of the most recent Mango updates will always appear in your Mango news. Okay, thanks Nicholas. Not Good a problem, day. sir, more than welcome. Ladies and gents, well, questions don't seem to be coming thick and fast. I'm sure most of you seem to be quite comfortable with the product. Um, if you're not comfortable with asking questions in a group, you're more than welcome to email myself and Paul. And we'll uh, obviously field that question and then reply to you when we've got a little bit of time. Um, just a reminder again that the support function has been removed from everybody. It must be allocated to the Mango administrators. And so yes, uh, Bert, there has been a recording of this afternoon. Everybody here, all the Mango administrators will then get a copy of this particular recording. And I just wanted from SRM side and from Mango, thanks very much for taking time out of your Friday afternoon to come into this webinar on how to get the most out of Mango. Once the updates are released next week, we will schedule another one and then take you guys through all the new developments. So um, I'm gonna give 10, 15 seconds if anybody's got a last question that they haven't asked, and then we will call it a day. I hope all of you guys have a uh, safe weekend and we trust that you guys are avoiding COVID and that your, your businesses are um, helping South Africa to fight their way back out of this. Thanks, Graham. No, sorry, Nicholas, sorry. Absolute <laughs> pleasure. So ladies and gents, we'll, we'll call it a day. Thanks very much. And I'll send you a copy of the recording and we'll notify you of when the next getting the most out of Mango webinar is going to be released after the next update. Thanks again. Have a great afternoon. Bye. Bye.